A group of charity leaders, business owners, and Minnesota sports celebrities are hoping to stop a significant change in electronic pull tabs. The legislature is on the verge of making people do a little extra work to pull the digital tabs, which could cost charities and the state millions of dollars. Fox 9's Corin Hoggard is live at the Capitol and looking at the numbers. Corin? Yeah, E-poll tabs cost $1.9 billion in revenue last year, and local charities pulled in tens of millions of dollars from that. But tribal casino operators believe those games too closely resemble slot machines, so this issue has ended up in court and here at the Capitol. The potential end of easy electronic pull tab betting has some Minnesota Republicans throwing all their cards on the table. The only thing that this bill is doing is reducing revenues for nonprofits that do incredible work in our communities. EPTs are digital versions of their printed siblings, revealing symbols or numbers with every play. The results are predetermined, not random, and the total payoff to players has to be at least 85%. A portion of the proceeds goes to state tax coffers and to local charities like veterans groups, volunteer fire departments, and youth sports teams, which is why retired NHL players Devin Dubnik, Tom Chorsky, and Nate Prosser are checking in. Tribal gaming operators say the open all EPT option, which unveils all the animated characters across the reels with one touch, is too much like slots, so they've sued and lobbied for change in St. Paul. The current omnibus tax bill would force people to activate only one tab at a time. So in the course of an hour, how many less pull tabs or how much less revenue do I donate? Um, it may only be $10 in, in that hour that I'm sitting there. But if you take and multiply that over hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people doing that. The issue also came up in 2021. And the state's fiscal note then estimated local charities would lose $33 million. The state's restaurants and bars would also lose about $30 million. Industry leaders say they'd have to completely replace machines, which could take a couple years. And they say the legislature hasn't given them any voice in the process. They did it wrong. We had no hearings. I call it magical language. And the bill's author says this limitation is necessary to make good on deals with Native American tribes. She also does not believe it's that big of a deal to go from one touch to four touch on those EPTs. Live at the Capitol, Corn Hogger. Fox 9. All right, thanks, Corn. As the state legislative session winds to an end, a change to Minnesota teacher pensions could still make it to the governor's desk. The state currently has the third highest retirement age in the country for teachers at 66 years old to get that full pension. A bill on the table right now would move that down to 64. The state is struggling to recruit new teachers and to keep teachers after a few years in the career. State Teacher of the Year Sarah Lancaster says the pension change would help retain some younger teachers. And we can invest in the future of our state by supporting the people who are the most significant variable in affecting the education of our students, the teachers. To make sure the pension fund still has money down the road, the bill calls for schools to contribute an extra 1% to the pension fund. Teachers would also have to kick in half that much. Legislators listened to testimony about the bill today, but it is not scheduled for any votes yet.